Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, for today's video, I have no makeup on because we are actually going to be testing out and trying the new Urban Decay Naked Cherry Palette. I just got this in the mail yesterday, and I am so excited to go ahead and open this and play with it and see what it's like. Um, Urban Decay is just known for their naked palettes. They do one almost every year. The last one, I believe, was the the Naked Heat, possibly. I know they did like the petite ones, but the actual Naked palette, it was the Naked Heat. And then they discontinued their original one, which was super sad. Really sad to see that one go, since that was one of my first high-end makeup palettes I ever purchased, and it's just so nostalgic. But I totally understand, because I feel like I hardly ever use mine anymore. But I'm glad they are still continuing the whole Naked line, and they are coming out with new ones. So, I was really excited to get my hands on this. I ordered it on the Urban Decay website. I will have a link down below to where you can purchase it. I'm not sure if it's on Sephora or Ulta yet, but yeah, I bought mine off Urban Decay. I do want to read a little bit about the palette. This one retails for $49. It is said that this is our wildest way yet to look better naked. Naked Cherry Eyeshadow Palette has a sexy vibe that's more tart than sweet. With 12 never-before-picked neutrals, this vamped-up cherry-hued palette is sure to bring out your sultriest, most tempting eye looks ever. So let's go ahead and unbox this palette here. So here is the packaging. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It has a row of all the cherries. I believe that's kind of like the shades that they have in the palette. I don't know. I just think that this is super cute packaging. I love it. It's nice like plastic. Here is the back. And then let's open it up and you have your colors. And the brush just fell out. I'll show you guys that in a second. But oh my goodness, how beautiful. So these are mostly all like, it looks like mauves, like rosy tones, and so on. So now I want to go ahead and do the swatches of the palette for you guys. I know everyone does swatches a little bit differently. I am going to do them on my hand with my finger this time, but let's get started. So the first shade we have is called Hot Spot. And this one's a beautiful cream. It will be perfect on the lid. It almost has a hint of pink to it, just very lightly. This next color is a matte brown shade called Caution. And it's pretty light. So this one I would probably use as a transition, but it is a very light shade. Next we have Bang Bang. This one kind of reminds me of NARS Orgasm Blush. It just has that really pretty like coral and gold finish to it. It looks gorgeous. Next up we have a matte. This one is kind of a rosy toned pink called Feels. I love this color. These mattes feel really soft, so I'm very excited to put this on my eyes. We have another matte shade. This one is more of like a peachy matte called Juicy. Love. I'm sorry if you can hear my camera focusing. It tends to do that since I don't have a proper lens on it, but I'm so sorry about that. Okay, next up is Turn On. It's almost like a peachy bronze. Then we have Ambitious. This is like super pigmented and beautiful. Next we have Bing. And this is like a matte, um, kind of a purpley rose shade. Really nice. Next is Devilish. We have a shimmer. This one is called Young Love. Really nice. Next we have Drunk Dial. And then last but not least is Privacy. Sorry, my swatch got a little crazy there. But this looks like a really nice matte deep brown. So those are the swatches. Everything looks really promising. So far the mattes seemed like they were just like really smooth and buttery. And the shimmers swatched amazingly. So let's go ahead and put this on the eye. Alright, so I already have eye primer on. So I'm going to go into Hot Spot that cream color and that is going to go all over the lid for our crease shade I'm gonna take juicy right here it's like a matte peachy shade and that is going to be our transition so I'm going to just sweep that into my crease and a little bit above Next I'm going to go in with Bing, it's like a matte, that matte um, kind of berry tone and I'm going to also put that in my crease just to add a little more color and brighten it up. These shadows are blending really good so far. 
not having any problems, but we'll have to see when I get to those really dark shades. But so far, this looks really nice. Next I'm going to go into this matte burgundy called Devilish, and I'm going to place that on the outer and inner corner. I'm going to try to do a halo eye. I feel like I'm not the best at them, I'm still kind of learning, but you guys will have to bear with me. I try my best. Um, I just think they're so pretty. And the halo eye is where you put a little bit of color on the um, outer corner and on the inner corner as well. and then. Um, the middle is like a shiny color. I tend to do a lot of the same techniques when I do my eyeshadow. Like my go-to is like crease, outer corner, shimmery on lid, and I do that for like everything. So sometimes it's hard for me to branch out, but I'm still kind of learning and getting used to how to do those fun techniques. So I'm just going to place that in the corner just lightly and blend in. So far, this, the blending has been absolutely effortless. So like, for a beginner halo eye like I am, this is working really good. So I think this might be like the best quality so far naked palette that I've tried. I want to add a little bit more depth to the look, so I will be taking Privacy, this darker brown, just a little bit on my brush and I'm also going to go into my outer corner with that and also my inner corner as well with the leftover product. Okay, so I think everything's pretty blended there. So far, that privacy shade is really nice. It wasn't, sometimes those darker browns can get a little patchy when applied, but this one is pretty good. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my lower lash line, and for that, I'm going to take that Feels shade that I used for our crease transition, and I'm starting with that. It looks like I got a little fallout under there, so it's already <laughs> a little darker, but um, this is why I always do my eyes first, because I always, I'm always messy. It just it never fails. I am smudging Feels underneath there. And then I'm going to deepen that up with, uh, let's do Privacy, the deep brown. So I'm just taking a little bit of that and smudging a little bit more. So next I'm going in with a wet flat brush and we are going to take Young Love. That is this shimmery purple, purpley red, and that is going to go in the center of our little halo eye. I'm also going to go in with Turn On, this like, it's a, like a deeper champagne color, and I'm going to just pop that a little bit in the center as well, just to add it a little, just to add a little bit more brightness. I really like that more like champagne bronze pop in the middle, so I'm going to add a little bit more because I'm all about shimmer. Alright, now that the eye look is finished, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my makeup on and finish up this little first look. Alright guys, here is the finished look. We did a fun, like, burgundy toned halo eye and I'm kind of living for it. I love this look. I think it came out really well and the shadows performed beautifully. So, so far the shades I use, I didn't really have any problems with. They all seem very nice. Um, the Privacy Dark Shade I really liked as well. Um, it did take a little bit to build up, but I do like that in my deeper shades because I don't like it to be like too patchy when I put it on. But other than that, I really don't have a ton of complaints for my first impressions. Everything performed really nicely, which is amazing. Looking at the palette, I feel like all the colors are definitely in like a similar color family. There's none that really stand out or don't really go with the palette. If I were to add anything in this palette, I would add like a mid-tone crease color brown, like a warm brown in this because then I feel like it would be absolutely perfect. But um, since you only have like those two rosy tones to use in the crease and then 
like a mid-tone brown would be just a little bit more neutral so you could wear it more for every day but um overall i do think that you could come up with some really fun looks with this palette it is absolutely stunning and i'm really impressed with that as far as comparisons i took a look at my palette drawer to find what palette reminds me of the most and actually it is kind of similar to the anastasia modern renaissance palette let me show you guys them side by side so you guys can see that they kind of are similar. I feel like the Anastasia has a couple more neutral colors in there and not as many pinky red tones. One thing I don't love about Anastasia shadows is the fallout. So if that is something that bothers you about Modern Renaissance, you might want to try the Urban Decay because this one hardly had any fallout, which was awesome. Yeah. I will do a couple comparison swatches between the palettes with some similar shades. So first up, I'm going to do the two neutral creams in the palettes. I have the Urban Decay is on top. That one is hot spot compared to the Modern Renaissance. The Modern Renaissance on the bottom is Tempura. Next up, this one here. This one is Turn On from Urban Decay. And then the bottom one is Vermeer from Anastasia. Definitely not alike at all. Um, they kind of look similar in the pan, but definitely not when I swatch them. Okay, so next these two look similar in the palettes from uh, Urban Decay. This one is Bing, and it's a little bit lighter compared to Anastasia. This one is Love Letter. So Bing is just a little bit lighter than Love Letter, but kind of the same feel. And then I wanted to compare these two shades. On top is Drunk Dial from Urban Decay, and the bottom one is Antique Bronze from Anastasia. So the Urban Decay definitely has more of that red tone in it, and the Anastasia is more brown. And then the last comparisons on top we have privacy from Armand Decay and on the bottom is a Cypress Umber from the Modern Renaissance palette so those two are similar as well I feel like the Urban Decay is just a little bit deeper and it has a tiny bit more red tone so yeah those are kind of my first impressions of the new Urban Decay Naked Cherry palette let me know down below what do you guys think are you guys going to be picking this one up do you think it's too similar to the Modern Renaissance I feel like they were definitely different enough but the Modern Renaissance does have those more neutral browns which I like and this one more like pinky tones so that's kind of my thoughts I do like this palette so far and I can't wait to try out some more. I feel like I'm going to be using this a lot. Um, it's definitely a fun fall palette with those fun burgundy shades. So one extra thing that I would add if I was going to change this palette is I would totally make it cherry scented. I know they have their cherry scented um, setting spray. I did not pick up anything else from this collection but it would be awesome if this was scented. I know that's kind of like a Too Faced thing but I just thought that would be kind of fun. So yeah, that's going to be it for my video today. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this palette down below, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.